Former Vice President Mike Pence on Monday filed the paperwork declaring his candidacy for the presidency of the United States. He plans to formally kick off his campaign in Iowa Wednesday, which is also his 64th birthday. He will likely use his familiar phrase, declaring himself, quote, a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order, which was a staple of his last time on the national ticket, running as the number two to the man he now hopes to beat. Vice presidents who run against their former bosses are rare. John Nance Garner ran against FDR in 1940, and Thomas Jefferson beat John Adams in the 1800 election. And while the list of GOP primary candidates grows bigger, New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu says he will not be joining that group. The moderate Republican had teased a presidential run over the past few months, but he announced Monday he would not be running, saying he wanted to be a, quote, more unleashed voice in the primary than he would have been had he been a candidate. Sununu has been vocal in the past about wanting to move the GOP away from former President Trump. For more on the 2024 presidential race and how its ever-growing selection of GOP candidates are seeking a place in the sun, here's CBS News Chief Elections and Campaign Correspondent Robert Costa. Former President Donald Trump's attorneys argued privately to Justice Department officials today that no charges should be brought against Trump in the case involving classified documents, citing unfair treatment by special counsel Jack Smith. This is kind of the last page in the defense attorney's playbook to avoid indictment. It's usually not successful but it almost always means an indictment is imminent. Trump has denied doing anything wrong. All I know is this, everything I did was right. Sources say a charging decision in the case is imminent and comes as the 2024 race is heating up. Trump's own former vice president, Mike Pence, filed his candidacy days after taking aim at Trump for praising North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian president Vladimir Putin. No one should be praising the dictator in North Korea, or, or praising uh, the, uh, the, the, the leader of Russia. With former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum also set to join the race this week, Republican candidates are seeking a breakthrough. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley took a swipe at Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for picking a fight with Disney after they opposed his so-called don't say gay bill. Because they went and criticized him, now he's going to spend taxpayer dollars on a lawsuit. It's just like all this vendetta stuff, we've been down that road. DeSantis called the attack bizarre and focused his attention on Trump, whom he trails by double-digit margins. I think that there's a lot of voters who just aren't going to vote for him. I think that it's right for us to bring new people into the party. And Robert Costa joins me now. Bob, you know this expression Bill Clinton once said when it came to presidential candidates, Democrats fall in love, Republicans fall in line. So what do you make of the number of Republican candidates now running? Well, John, I was reading a book, Whistle Stop, recently about a lot of these such stories. And another phrase that comes to mind is uh, dated Dean and Mary Carey. Remember that from... Uh, <laughs> presidential race years ago, 2003, 2004. This is the period of the primary where a lot of these contenders are being uh, evaluated by caucus goers in Iowa, primary voters in New Hampshire, South Carolina, and elsewhere. They're making their case. They're making their announcement, jumping into the race. But at the end of the day, this dating period in presidential politics, uh, it will ultimately come to a conclusion phase where they have to settle on a candidate. And at this point, former President Donald Trump still has an enormous amount of goodwill among Republican voters. The polling backs that up. But if you look at the polls and you talk to voters and you combine all the reporting and the anecdotes together, what I find in my assessment is a Republican race that's relatively fluid. Yes, Trump is the dominant force, but because of all the outstanding legal challenges and the emerging candidates coming in, including former Vice President Mike Pence this week, this is a race that really could turn in a lot of directions. And that's a great analogy. In that 2004 race, of course, the Democratic leader Gephardt attacking Dean in what was later called a murder-suicide. The two of them took each <laughs> other down and Kerry Rose, which is perhaps a warning to some are you, Republican. Are you making a suggestion to New Jersey, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie here, I, John? I, I think there's a potential for two candidates to go after each other and allowing a third to elevate. I don't, I don't know exactly who to put in what slot. but um, Well, what strikes me really, John, is that so many of the rival candidates who I'm talking to behind the scenes, their campaigns, they seem to want to go after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, not Trump. They see him as the first obstacle in this race. 
So that, we could be here till breakfast, Bob, but so let me ask you this question. Are there candidates who are running now? There's also a phenomenon where there are candidates who may or may not have a chance um, at, the, at the actual nomination, but, but voters like to have them in the race um, and that they serve a role in the race. Thinking about Mike Pence or any other candidate joint, getting in the race, is there anybody who fits in that category? Mike Pence, in many ways, is running as a comeback candidate for himself personally after dutifully doing his duty, uh, doing his job on January 6, 2021, to certify the 2020 election. But he's also running as a comeback candidate for a certain kind of American conservatism that has really become a relic in our age of populism fueled by grievance. Pence is arguing with his candidacy that Republicans should consider moving back to that Reagan era uh, version of Republican politics, hawkish on foreign policy, taking on issues like Medicare and Social Security, long-term federal spending, having a more culturally conservative perspective, uh, not so much a, a pugnacious approach to politics. He's a character out of the Reagan era, out of the early 90s and the 1994 revolution, uh, someone who you can see reading a Heritage Foundation memo before he goes to bed at night. Uh, and this is a Republican politician model that has really become outdated. Pence is saying, Let's give it one more shot. And so a lot of Republicans, I think, like to see Pence in the race for personal reasons, but also that political one. Robert Costa in Washington. Always a pleasure, Bob. Thank you. Thank you.